All right, so if you've been watching me for a while, you'll know I love setting a theme for encounters and campaigns, because I feel when you have a point of focus, it's much easier to be creative. And what better theme to pick than time? It's a concept played up in many fantasy worlds, and particularly in D&D, with gods of time, spells like time stop, and a bunch of other clockwork goodness. And so, hello, my name is Matt, and welcome to my hidden nerdy side and today we're building a dungeon based on time. So when generating ideas for our dungeon, let's take our theme and break it down in as many different ways as possible. So what is time associated with? Well, there is the flow of time, time speeding up and time slowing down, a common element you see in the fantasy genre. There is also time as a concept and the passage of time. You know when you're having a good day and it goes by quickly, and other days it feels like time is taking forever despite every day having the same amount of time? Well, can we work with that? Maybe. But we can also break it down even further and talk about what time actually affects. Well, as time goes on, we age, so we can potentially incorporate that into our dungeon. And in contrast, if time went backwards, we would de-age. There's also erosion that happens over time and things break down. That's just what happens. But can we incorporate that into an encounter? Maybe. We'll see. Now, so far, we've been talking about what time actually is, and what it affects. But how about how we see time or the imagery and sensations we associate with it? For example, when we think of time, we may picture clocks ticking, gear shifting, or even the sands of time dripping down an hourglass. All this imagery we can possibly toss into our encounter to iron out our dungeon's aesthetic. And finally, when all is said and done, we can look at how time is already being used and take inspiration from it. And what's an engaging way time is already used in fantasy gaming? Well, the time trial sticks out to me. As soon as there's a ticking clock, everything is much more intense, so tossing that into our dungeon sounds like an awesome idea. These are just some of the cool ways of breaking down time, and if you know some cool ones as well, please share them in the comment section so we can all learn and enjoy. So I always like to have a little lore for my places of interest, even if my players never figure out the extent of it. This is because, again, like I said earlier, it helps hone your creativity when you have a direction to go. So for our dungeon, we'll say it was created by some greater time deity or powerful creature who made a deal with a guy who owns the territory on the opposite side of our dungeon. We'll call this guy Lord Everos, and a long time ago, he found out a massive empire was coming to invade his territory. He needed time to prepare his forces as they were scattered, and so after paying some sort of price you decide on, the time god turned the tunnel leading to Everos's land into our dungeon in order to slow down invaders. And this tunnel-like dungeon is now known as the Passage of Time. Now this is a nice piece of info because not only is it just a cool fact your players can discover, and it contains fun words play I'll pat myself on the back for, but also it lets us know the intention behind the dungeon, which is it isn't necessarily built to kill, but to stall and give Everos an advantage. But now that we have our lore and our list of time-related elements, let's start piecing it all together. So your players will enter a cavern and eventually will come across two open archways that lead into our dungeon, but in between those two archways will be a riddle-like poem. Your players won't know this at the time, but it will actually tell them everything that will be happening in the dungeon ahead. This is a great way to foreshadow events to come, and also reward players who are smart enough to figure out how to solve certain problems based on the poem. So, the poem will read, Right or left, old or new, this matters not until too late. Up, down, around and around, fast and slow is your fate. Gears will shift, metal will fly, and eventually you will learn. Before you stands a river of sand, and to it you shall return. Build yourself up from what you are to carry on to the next. Some may die and some may live, but all will be vexed. The clock will tick and tick and tick until sixty hands have passed, and if you're not out by then, what you are shall forever last. 
Now your players will encounter everything in this poem, but let's start with the first bit. Right or left, old or new, actually refers to the two archways that will kick off our dungeon. If your players go right, they will start to quickly age, and if they go left, they will quickly de-age. Now when I say quickly, I don't mean immediately, but over the course of an hour, they will age or de-age until they become incredibly old and decrepit or become little babies. And this is also what I mean by our last two passages. 60 hands referencing 60 minutes, and so long as your players exit the dungeon in time, their aging or de-aging won't be permanent. This applies to more than one thing, but we'll get to that later. Now once one of your players go through one door and see it's safe, the others will likely follow. So you'll probably only get either a batch of really old players or little kid players, but who knows, maybe you're lucky and get both. But regardless, what's great about this is the flavor is completely different, but the effects of aging and de-aging are relatively the same. When you're a kid, you're weaker, dumber, and not as fast as you are in your prime, and that's also the same once you're older and lose your faculties. So every 15 minutes, your players will start to get more and more debuffs. Now we don't want to be too insane with these because that's not fun, but I think what I'm tossing up on screen is enough to fit the theme and be punishing without making your players useless. So this means if your players beat the dungeon in under 60 minutes, which we are obviously rooting for, they won't lose too much and it will all return to them in the end so long as they pass in time. So it's not a big deal, but of course change it up as you wish. But as soon as your players enter a doorway, a ticking noise will radiate throughout the dungeon. Your players will now literally hear a ticking clock and it will make everything feel much more intense since they now know they're being timed for something that's most likely not good. And now our one hour time trial has commenced. Now if we go to this line, fast or slow is your faint, this is because every minute your players will change from being under the effects of the haste spell to the slow spell and back and forth back and forth. This is just a bit of randomness to help emulate the feeling of time speeding up and slowing down that will be funny to see play out. And if you wanted to get even crazier, you could even have them switch back and forth every round. It's a lot to track, but if you can pull it off, why not? So the ticking will begin and your players will be zipping or crawling around as they see nothing but blackness in all directions except for the path ahead of them. They will see a series of different colored gears stretching hundreds a feet long. The gears will be either gold, silver, or bronze, and there will also be three sets of levers at the beginning, middle, and end of our path. And yes, these levers will be either gold, silver, or bronze. Pulling a lever will cause the corresponding colored gears to rise while the other gears will fall. So space out your gears so your players have to work together and use the levers intelligently to make it across. But to add a bit more fun into the mix, if you pull a lever, the corresponding color will also start to spin, causing your players to swirl around and around while standing on it, and also make your players either roll acrobatics or athletics checks to jump from gear to gear. I'd make the checks around a DC 10 because your players will be doing a lot of jumping, and for an additional safety net, your players can choose to fall down onto the gears below, taking fall damage but not falling into a pit of blackness. But if they do, no worries, they'll just be sent back to the beginning. But to make it even wackier, and possibly deter players from just flying over, why not toss in some constructs or clockwork enemies to make trouble for your players? You can decide on the creatures, but I think Modrons work terrifically in this case. Not only because of their lore, appearance, and the fact you can toss a lot at your players, but also because they can fly, allowing them to be quite annoying. Now only Modrons and Quadrones can fly, but you can slap wings on the others if you wish. It doesn't matter. But after your players make it to the end and avoid falling off or being pushed off by flying metal boxes, they will see a waterfall of sand falling from so high they cannot see its origins and going so low they can't see the bottom. And now we move on to this passage. Before your players is the river of sand and they'll have to jump into it to continue. But once they do, they'll be taken away by the river and notice their flesh is being ripped off their body. And then their muscle, then their bones, and everything else until they are nothing but incorporeal spirits and their gear falls to the ground. And then
then they'll reach the bottom and see nothing but a giant pit of sand and a doorway that has a blue aura surrounding it. If your players try and leave as spirits, the blue aura will stop them from doing so, which means they can only leave after rebuilding their bodies from sand, referring to the passage you see on screen. Many cultures reference people being built from either sand, earth, or clay, so this is just another piece of imagery that also creates a fun role-playing opportunity. Have your players roll sleight of hand checks to determine how accurately they build themselves back together and also how quickly they do so. Seeing how your players rebuild themselves and how badly they mess up will be a hilariously good time. But don't worry, this will also be reversed once they make it out. And also the sand will magically move to fill certain gaps so your players are even capable of doing this in such a short time span. Now finally, your players will enter the last room, which references the past here. This will be our final combat room where you can add some shifting gear floors if you wish. There will be a small force of Modrons along with a homebrew Modron I created called a Decadrome. You can find a stat block for it in the description, but it won't be too powerful in terms of stats. However, it will have a very strong rechargeable ability, that being Time Stop. So while your players are fighting on shifting gears, all while either being affected by haste or slow, because remember, that lasts the whole dungeon, randomly their characters will freeze in time, and then resume to a bunch of Modron shifting all over the map and barraging them with hits. But if your players defeat the Modrons, they will continue onward, make it out of the dungeon, and revert back to their former selves. However, the cherry on top is time outside the dungeon moves much faster. For an hour in the passage of time is actually six weeks in the real world. And what lies on the other side for your players? Well, I'll leave it up to you. Now let's look at our list and see if we incorporated everything. Well, for the most part, yes, but we didn't use stuff like erosion, and that's okay, because we don't have to cram everything into a single encounter, so don't worry about that. As for what levels I think could run this, I think a group of 4-6 to six players level 7-9 to nine could take this one quite well, but you could run this at lower or higher levels with a few adjustments. But with all the moving parts and crazy shenanigans, no matter what level you run this at, I'm sure your players will have an awesome time. But, of course, this is only one way to run a time-themed dungeon. What would you do differently? Let me know in the comments below, and if you do use this in your future games, make sure to let me know how it goes. Also, I'm always accepting challenges, so feel free to give me your best shot. Thanks for watching and indulging my hidden nerdy side.